Hey, this is Frank Yosa, CEO of Ketonade, using this COVID pandemic times to put out some more content and answer some questions that I get so frequently that I thought I can now just send you a video. And uh, they got some COVID hair going on here. Hopefully that won't be too, too distracting. And don't worry, I got my social distancing thing going on. I'm on a beach with no one near me within 100 yards. Um, so taking ketone ester on an empty stomach, that is one of the key things in the protocol and it's the number one thing that jumps out for people saying oh I, I can't do that like I'll do all these other things except for that and then you know oftentimes or sometimes they come back and say hey it didn't work and then I go through and you know they skip that one thing so it, it doesn't work that way you can't have uh, some of the benefits of the cost savings and stuff and just s skip that so why empty stomach first of all let's go into one of the papers the first paper on ketone ester is called the Cox paper COX and what they did is they took a large bolus of ketone ester uh, and they also did a dual fueling protocol, but they did it on an empty stomach. That's the important part. And the ketones skyrocketed straight up within you know, 15, 30 minutes. Then another paper a couple years later, where they used our supplied ketone ester, they took it with food. And when you take it with food, it drastically slows the absorption into your blood. So instead of the chart going straight up and, and maintaining, it went you know, slowly over, I don't know if it was a one or two or three hour period, just drastically slows it down. So with the micro dosing, which means just taking a small amount, the bottle of KE4 technically has 60 mLs, but people are taking, you know, men, the average person will take 10 mLs and women sometimes five mLs. Um, that's the average amount. Some people will go to a little bit more, but more is not necessarily better. And I'll go into that in a second. But the empty stomach is really key to get the ketones in your system. Um, now, if you're a regular carb athlete and you're comparing, you know, sucking down a gel pack and then you know, on an empty stomach, and then uh, you know the following day taking ketone ester on an empty stomach, you're probably not going to notice much difference because you're comparing, you know, one fuel source for another fuel source. Now there might be some advantages with, you know, less lactic acid buildup. Um, you might find your endurance towards the and you know, be improved up until 90 minutes or two hours, then we have to talk about you know, re-upping and that gets complicated. But if you normally do 30 minutes, you might find yourself being able to do uh, 40 minutes. So it might help a little bit, but it's not gonna be as drastic. Where it's most drastic, drastic is for low carb or keto athletes, which you do not need to be low carb or keto, but just those people just, it's exponentially more useful for them. If you're low carb and you're keto and you already do your your workouts fasted, taking ketone ester beforehand, it's just another fuel source. It's just like that non-keto person, that glucose-based athlete taking glucose before a workout. They're gonna have an improvement in performance versus a fasted workout. So the keto people, by taking the ketone ester versus fasted, you've got more calories and you've got a, a fuel that your body can actually burn. Now, just because your numbers might be better doesn't mean you're necessarily stronger. So if you normally lift, you know, I don't know, 200 pounds, and then you take the ketone ester and you're lifting 210, 220, doesn't necessarily mean you're stronger. That last 1020 is the fuel source. Um, now it can help with, you know, recovery. So you can do that workout again and again, you know, that's something different, but it'll be more pronounced um, for people that are used to doing empty stomach. Um, so when people try to skip that step and they have a breakfast beforehand, their, their stomach is full and they're trying to do the microdosing, it just it just doesn't work. And I've, I've fought some people that are glucose based and say, oh, I have to eat, you know, I'm doing a two hour you know, workout and I have to eat. I say, okay, fine. Well, but you know, can you try it once? Maybe find a 90 minute workout and try it once and see how it goes. And we've gotten good feedback from that. People you know, were shocked. They didn't expect that to happen. Um, so empty stomach allows you to take much less, which allows you to take it daily. Uh, and then some people will also take it right after their workout. Um, there's a few different reasons. Some people do it for to curb their hunger. So some people work out and then they're super hungry afterward and they want to you know, not be eating. So that's one way to do it. But also for recovery purposes, uh, taking it immediately after the workout can help your recovery so that you can do more of those difficult workouts you know, multiple times a week. And that is what can, you know, grow more muscle doing more hard workouts without being, uh, you know, run ragged. 
So now I'm going to talk about the dual fuel protocol, and that can also be done on an empty stomach. And empty stomach, by the way, we mean, you know, ideally after an overnight fast and then going straight into your workout. Uh, but it can also mean, you know, having eaten breakfast, maybe three hours, a small breakfast, like half of what you might normally do three hours before that usually is, is enough time. Some people will even find it more beneficial, still trying to kind of figure that out. But with the dual fuel protocol, you want to be taking, again, empty stomach, and you take, first you take the, the, the gel pack, so the same number of ketones, so you have to look in the bottle. If you're drinking um, 10 mLs, that's five grams of ketones. You want to compare that five grams of ketones to you know, five grams of carbohydrates, not necessarily sugar, but carbohydrates in one of those gel packs. Um, the lower amounts actually, actually don't really need any carbs. It's more when you actually increase uh, the ketones to 20 to 25 mLs. That's when you really want to start bringing in uh, the carbs. 25 mLs of KE4 is like 12 grams of ketones. So you want to incorporate 12 grams on a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, the higher you go, you want to really hit that one-to-one. -one. On, on the between 15 mLs and 30 mLs of KE4, you can you can take a little bit less glucose. And the reason we need to take glucose is it'll actually drop your blood glucose too much. So the microdosing, people going from 5 to 15 mLs, they can uh, sustain that amount without having an impairment. But when you go higher than that, it drops your blood glucose too much and impairs your performance. But if you add, once you start going to the higher amounts, you start adding glucose first and then that keeps your blood glucose stable, and then you can have ketones as well. Ben Greenfield once said on a podcast he wasn't quite sure about having the dual fuel and having both glucose and ketones high. Well, he kind of mis misspoke on that um, because the the ketones will bring the blood glucose down, so you're not going to be flying high. The idea is to, to have them both at um, a moderate amount so your total energy isn't too much because if you have too much energy, you'll then have a corresponding crash. So the dual fuel protocol, also empty stomach, you'll take some uh, glucose and then 15, 20 minutes later, you'll take some of the ketone ester and then you can start your warm up uh, 10, 15 minutes later. It's not always better. It's just a, a different protocol. You try it different ways, uh, try different amounts. More is not always better. Um, some people like to use UCAN, which is a slow glucose. Um, that might work as well, depending on how much ketone ester you take. If you take too much ketone ester, I'm not sure that that slow moving uh, UCAN type drink will will keep the, the blood glucose up. So you could even do a combo. You can do some fast carbs and then some slow carbs, and that'll work over a one or two hour period where the blood glucose does tend to uh, drop with the ketone esters um, and then you know the you can can kind of keep that up so everyone's different everyone needs different amounts um, and make sure you get your electrolytes in there as well the ke1 already has the electrolytes in there but the ke4 does you know barely has any not even worth counting um, so try to uh, you know add those back in more than you might normally have of your electrolytes adding an extra 20 percent uh, that should help if you have any questions email me frank at ketonaid.com and you know hit subscribe i don't have that many videos that come up but you know oftentimes people find them uh very useful so uh hit subscribe and you'll be alerted next time there's a video thanks